got to see what you see. You are doing a great work in me. I've decided I can stand still. No, you have given me purpose. Oh, my, all my heart is yours. Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about responsibility while we take a look at the story of your very own superpower, words. I think my pet plant just ate my pet spider. Uh oh. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about responsibility. Which is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. Do you like my pet plant? Plants are awesome. But do they really qualify as pets? Absolutely. They're alive and you have to take care of them. Hmm. True story. Ooh, you have to make sure the plant gets lots of light, but not too much direct sun. Plants also need water, but not too much water, or they'll get root rot. Root rot? That sounds like a metal band. If the soil looks dark or sticks to your finger, it's a sign that the plant doesn't need any more water. Most house plants don't need much plant food either. Unless you got a Venus flytrap, which will eat all your household pests. You know what plants do like? <gasps> Docudramas about the rainforest. Actually, plants love it when you say encouraging things to them. Seriously? For reals! In one experiment, two identical plants were placed in different areas of a school. For 30 days, kids would say mean things to one plant and kind, encouraging things to the other plant. And this is what happened. Oh, you're such a sweet little vicious plant, are you? <laughs> well, if our plants are really pets, we should give them better pots. I'm listening. I know how to upcycle these bottles into super fun planters. Well then, let's make it. Step one, using a rubber band as a guide. Use your dry erase marker to draw a circle around your bottle. Mm -hmm. 
Then, draw a couple triangles for ears. Step two, cut down your bottle and punch a few small holes in the bottom. You might need a grown up's help with this, especially getting it started. Ladies first. Thank you. Step three, paint. You'll need acrylic paint for this part. And now we wait for paint to dry. You should I win. Finally, step four, use a paint pen or permanent marker to draw a face. Ta-da! Oh, so cute! Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be wise to introduce our pets to their new planters. Speaking of wise choices, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians is one of 21 letters in the New Testament. The leaders of the early church wanted to teach Jesus' followers what was true, and often they wrote letters to do that. The Apostle Paul sent one of these letters to the believers in the church at Ephesus. Paul had visited Ephesus on his third missionary journey to tell people about Jesus. The people in Ephesus worshiped false gods, but Paul spent nearly three years starting a brand new baby church there. When Paul had to leave after a riot broke out, he knew the Jesus followers still had a lot to learn. So, a few years later, Paul wrote a letter to encourage the Ephesians. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Padma. After Paul left Ephesus, he continued to tell people about Jesus. But a few years later, he was arrested. Paul didn't let being under house arrest stop him, though. He used that time to write letters of encouragement, including his famous letter to the believers in Ephesus. I am sending this letter to you, God's holy people in Ephesus. Because you belong to Christ Jesus, you are faithful. Paul went on to remind the Ephesians how God had chosen them to belong to Jesus and how that should give them amazing hope. In the second part of the letter, he wrote about the ways that following Jesus could show up in their everyday lives, like in the way they spoke to each other. Okay, uh, make sure to get this down. Don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. You know what Paul was saying? Your words have power. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes my words get away from me, and that can cause some serious damage, like a loose boulder tumbling down the hillside. Paul called this evil talk. Another way to say that is simply bad language or harmful words. Let's break that down. The obvious one is bad words. That's any language that doesn't honor God's name or words your grown-ups have told you are inappropriate. But harmful words can be a lot sneakier than that. For instance, when you grumble or complain, you make everyone around you miserable. Another kind of harmful words is gossip. That means talking about another person when they aren't around, especially if it's something mean or something you wouldn't say to their face. And of course, any unkind words can be hurtful. And here's the last one on our list, 
lying. When you don't tell the truth, people can get hurt, including you. That's a lot to remember. Honestly, feels like it would be easier to do this all the time. The second part of our verse offers some help. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. The best way to not say something harmful is to focus on saying something helpful instead. Let's take a look. Helpful words can encourage. I'm sorry you're having a hard time. I'm here for you. Helpful words can celebrate someone. You did awesome. I can totally see how hard you work. Helpful words can serve someone too. Yeah, this confused me at first too, but it's easier if you do this part first. And you can always find something to say thank you for, even when you're tempted to complain. Thanks for always making dinner, Mom. When you focus on words that encourage, celebrate, serve, and thank others, it's a lot easier to stay away from harmful words. Paul said that by doing that, then what you say will help those who listen. Your words have so much power. There are times you can make someone's day or ruin it with just one sentence. That's why one of the best ways to show you're following Jesus is to use your words wisely. The end. Ouch, that one hits close to home. Yeah, sometimes my words are more like rolling boulders than they are actually helpful. Controlling what you say is one of the toughest things to do. It's veritably arduous. Just studying for a vocab test. So, other than looking up what Sebastian just said, what's our part in the story? Well, the first step is to pay attention. Chances are you don't even notice when you're complaining or when you make an unkind comment about someone. So take time to think before you speak. When you want to grumble at your teacher for giving you another quiz, instead you can thank her for explaining things so well. If your friend says something negative about someone, you can point out something positive about that person. So, the other day, my dad asked me who got mud on the carpet, and I wanted to blame my sister. But I finally spoke up and told him I did it. Those are all great ways to use your words wisely. But truth is, it's hard to control what you say. If you're trying to do it on your own, it's gonna be tough. Exactly. That's why we need Jesus. When you follow Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to guide us. We can ask for help any time we're tempted to use harmful words. How superlative. Translation, that's awesome. I think you've got it. See you next time. Bye. So here's the thing. Use your words wisely. I feel like our pet plants are happy about their potting upgrade. They'll be even happier if we say nice stuff to them. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next time. time. You're the best digestive plant. You are so cute. Plant you know, I really love your hair. Did you do something different with